going on, Jerome? It's a beautiful Tuesday. Birds are chirping and shit, and uh, we got a bunch of things to go through. Uh, some Vikings related, some not. Things that just entertain me. Uh, Vikings Tuesday news dump, and uh, Kevin O'Connell in his vinegar strokes. We did a fun caption contest uh, on the community page, and it's just like, I don't know, man. I, I hope it works out. I, I, I just re really, really do. Uh, something that worked out is the, the Chargers charging uh, on Monday Night Football. Now, th there was a bit of a conspiracy theory because th there was a lady who went viral uh, because of her overzealousness and emotional investment in the Chargers. And a lot of people said that maybe she was a paid actress by either the team or the league just to try and juice up. Like, hey, there's Chargers fans here. Don't worry about it. And, I mean, L.A. does not have any actresses. I don't know, man. But, uh, like, she was living and dying with every single snap during the game. It was hilarious. And, uh, uh, fortunately, uh, at the end, she got let down is what it is. Also, let down for the Chargers uh, it has been uh, has been uh, wide receiver Quentin Johnston so far this season. And you remember him. QJ, the pride of TCU, uh, he, he's got the size, he's got all that stuff, and he was taken ahead of Jordan Addison in that run of wide receivers at the end of the first round, 2023. Uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba uh, hasn't really gotten things going with the Seahawks. Uh, QJ is whatever. Zay is pretty damn solid. I love his game, uh, but the Vikings have gotten the best of it so far with Jordan Addison. We, we don't talk about Puka Nakua mm, or, or Tank Dell or uh, Rasheed Rice, whatever. But uh, Jordan, uh, Vikings fan page put this out. Jordan Addison in the season, 22, uh, 22 277, uh, and four touchdowns, uh, 12.6 yards per catch. Uh, Quentin Johnston, so far, uh, six for 44, zero touchdowns, 7.3 uh, yards per grab, as well as ha has had a number of drops. So, I mean, Quentin Johnston, it's been a tough time getting him into the offense, and uh, even with Mike Williams out, they've been leaning on Josh Palmer a lot more. Uh, but Addison um, ha has really shown up and shown out thus far, and the Vikings need him over the next couple of games uh, as a weather out the J.J. Storm. Uh, speaking of weathering out, so the Vikings, yeah, people still make a lot about, hey, the Vikings won 13 games last year, but th th they're lucky. You know, the ball bounced their way, uh, and they were great at one-score games, and the Vikings this year, uh, uh, not so much. But uh, Tom Bliss uh, does up this great chart in terms of charting out who has been the luckiest and unluckiest teams in the league, and the Vikings are dead last. I mean, so so this goes into you know drop passes, dropped interceptions, turnovers, uh, missed field goals, fumble recoveries, which should be 50-50, but the Vikings have uh, certainly gotten the worst of it. And the Vikings are negative 133.5%. The next closest is the Bears at negative 87.7%. So the Vikings clearly are the most unlucky team in the league. And the, the biggest part is, so you see that the Chargers are number one, uh, and their largest boost comes from drop passes. And that, of course, stems from TJ Hawkinson having two hands on the football for the game-winning touchdown at the end of the Vikings-Chargers game, which he dropped, was deflected twice, and then ended up uh, in the midst of Kenneth Murray, the linebacker from Oklahoma. So uh, that, that's literally just the way the ball has bounced so far, and the Vikings, they're not helping themselves. Uh, and you could say that they're, they have some bad fumble luck, but... That, that's what's frustrating about the Vikings is that they're that close to getting it done. And frankly, oh, all right, so uh, DVOA points this out. Uh, Dan Pizzula, go. Uh, after a six, uh, week six last season, the 5-1 and one Vikings had a DVO, uh, DVOA of negative 7.1%. Uh, after week six this season, the 2-4 and four Minnesota Vikings have a DVOA of 0%. And I firmly will say, even with the Justin Jefferson injury, the 2023 Vikings are better than the 2022 Vikings. Like, if somehow Vegas could set it up where the two teams played each other on a neutral side field, I think that the 2023 Vikings would be favored by a field goal. I really do. And, you know, part of it is like, yo, do the Vikings get, get lucky last year? Sure, to a degree. Are the Vikings getting unlucky this year? Yes, to a massive degree. And, and that's why I do have hope uh, for the rest of the season is that, I mean, you look at all the analytics. I mean, the analytics love the Vikings this year. They love the offensive line. Uh, they love the defensive uh, pressure. They, they love everything, man. And I think eventually the Vikings will put together, uh, instead of on paper, on purpose on the actual field, man. Uh, and also, ooh, this one's going to just put put a stake through the hat of all the haters and the losers. So our guy Benjamin Solak put this out. Uh, he 
searched um, for, this is from Pro Football Reference for combined games in multiple seasons from 2020 to 2023. Quarterbacks credited with game-winning drive in the regular season, sort of by descending game. So, who has the most game-winning drives uh, over the last four seasons from 2020 to 2023? And now, this is originally a Justin Herbert tweet, but of course, ooh, I mean, who who just randomly popped up? So, Kirkua, Jerome, Ezekiel Cousins up there at 15, and the rest of the list. Uh, there's some anomalies on here. So, Derek Carr is on here. 14 sure herbert 14 yes brady with 13 yeah i'm a homes with 11 uh, big ben and Tannehill are randomly with 11 but ooh, who's top dog and also who tied the nfl record last year with eight and you know a lot of people like to poo poo on kirk cousins but i mean kirk kirk over the last couple of years has gotten it done when he needs to and also you look at the wild card game like what more do you want from kirk like he put up massive stats in that game uh, oh but check down on fourth and eight how about you don't give up 31 points and 431 yards at home against daniel freaking jones how about you do that hmm? Hmm? Hmm. doesn't matter but uh, again I, people get dug into their narratives and it's really hard to change their mind because i i feel like when new information is introduced and it does change the calculus people don't want to see themselves as flip-flopping when they absolutely should like when new information is introduced i mean it's perfectly your prerogative to change your mind and kirk cousins was ass thank you 2018 2019 the first six games of 2020 but since that bye during the rona season he's been really damn good He's been really damn good, and uh, he, he doesn't get uh, enough credit. And also, the Vikings need him to play even better uh, with J.J. out in these next couple of games. Speaking of injuries, so uh, Josh Tolentino uh, over at uh, JTC, so, uh, beat, beat reporter for the Eagles. Uh, Eagles uh, GM Howie Roseman and his staff spent Monday scouring the rest of the league for external assistance at secondary, according to league sources. Uh, more on the state of the DB room, da 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 So they've had a bunch of injuries uh, in that secondary. Frankly, their secondary was really thinned out to begin with, especially after losing Marcus Epps, former Viking legend, by the way, pride of Wyoming. And you know, defensive back, uh, specifically safety, is where the Vikings are quite deep. So... Lou was seen for Jordan Davis one time. Hmm. Now, obviously, this is not serious, but I mean, a lot of people make make a big to do is like, oh, could have had Hamilton uh, at twelve, could have had uh, Jameson Williams, could have had Jordan Davis. I mean, Jordan Davis would have come in handy along the defensive line this year, but it is what it is. I still have faith in Scene, but you know, we we, we got to get our jokes in. Uh, speaking of jokes, so uh, I was randomly listening to the. Monday night football broadcast uh, on the radio when I was driving uh, on Monday night. And I, I, I love it. Usually it's Kevin Harlan, stud, massive stud. And I love when he called Wolves games back in the day. The big ticket, up high, down hard. Uh, and usually it's Kurt Warner uh, in the uh, color analyst role. But uh, for uh, for some reason, it was Mike Golick, uh, which I, I, I like and respect Golick. I love me some Mike and Mike from back in the day. Uh, and Golick, he's... He is an unapologetic uh, Notre Dame homer, which I, I like and respect as well. But he, he had a take which was off. Mm. So, you know, Derwin James uh, really had a, a bit of a sloppy game. But uh, he, he made a play, and Golick uh, said about James, quote, Derwin James really has revolutionized the safety position, both being able to cover deep and be a stud near the line of scrimmage. And the whole thing about it is, that's Harrison Smith territory, man. Like, Ed Reed was a great uh, coverage, safety. Troy Palomalu, a little bit more uh, around the line of scrimmage, although not a slouch in coverage either. But the guy who could do both was Harrison Smith. And, and you look at look at it, like Cam Chancellor at the line of scrimmage, Earl Thomas, more of a coverage guy. And, uh, I mean, I, Joey Browner, I guess, is the best of the hybrid world too. But, I mean, a guy that can do both, that's Harrison Smith. And, again, Golick Jr. is a Notre Dame guy, so is Harrison Smith. Like, how, how does he – <clears throat> How's he not give some love to Hitman? I don't get it, man. I don't get it. Uh, also looking forward to Monday night. So uh, Vikings Niners first practice isn't until Thursday, so that's when the first uh, injury report will come out. But, I mean, both teams are dealing with uh, a couple of injuries. Schefter, go. Uh, 49ers head coach uh, Kyle Shanahan said uh, running back Christian McCaffrey is undergoing an MRI on his oblique injury. Uh, so, you yeah, that that's the side. That's the side of the abs that always never seem to slim out. Mm. Uh, and then Debo shoulder, Trent Williams ankle are considered day to day, aren't we all? Uh, Trent Williams did return to the Browns game. Debo did not. And McCaffrey, I mean, M McCaffrey's in, in the running for NFL MVP, and he's had a score in every single game. And he's that would, that would be a major loss. Like even if he 
does play and is, you know, 50 percent, 50, 60, 70 percent of himself. I mean, th that's a very impactful injury uh, for the game and frankly could swing things uh, quite a bit. So that's something to monitor. And I know Niners fans will be like, oh, 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 we're playing with injuries. The Vikings are literally playing without the, the best non-quarterback in the league. No big deal. No, no big deal. Uh, but that's it. Uh, it's Vikings Tuesday news dump. Let us know your thoughts and our thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Want to support the work? Put a little something in the Venmo. But to next time, Skull Production Value.